What is up you guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. This video is an update on our closed loop flow systems here at the Coral Farm. We've been using closed loops now for about four to five years and a few years back I did do a video that kind of goes over the basics of a closed loop. Since that time I've learned a little bit so this video is kind of a reflection. We've made some modifications of our closed loops here, and it's kind of a nice exercise to go back and see how things started and think about some of these tips and tricks that I wish someone had told me. Okay, real quick, what are closed loops? There was some confusion in the comments of that first video about what they even were. So in short, it is a flow system consisting of a pump that draws water from a bulkhead intake in the aquarium and discharges that water back into the display tank without passing through a sump or any kind of filtration. What are the benefits? I would say that the first big benefit is that the pump is external. So when you go to maintain these things, it is so much nicer to be working with a dry pump rather than having one that's been in the sump for a long time or in the aquarium that's built up all kinds of gunk and crud. It is purely a servicing perk. The second benefit is that a closed loop can be very discreet. You can hide the intake and return plumbing very easily in the aquascape, for example, or you can make it very discreet on the back glass. Now you might be thinking, well, couldn't you do this with a power head? And it is possible, but you can't do this as easily with a pump because with a pump, you have power cord management. And with a pump, you also have to be able to take it out and clean it and service it. That can become more of a challenge if you wanted to bury it deep into your aquascape, for example. A closed loop is nice because the portion that is in the water is just plumbing. You don't really need to mess with it nearly so often. In fact, in many of our systems, it's been four years and we've never messed with that plumbing. Also, as far as the aesthetics go, and specifically to large peninsula tanks, it is so nice because you can design these things in such a way that you don't need to have pumps on that far end. Oftentimes people like to have these long peninsula displays, but the flow at the very far end, that observation end, tends to get a little stagnant out there. And it's really challenging to bring flow from that distance all the way back to the overflow. Closed loops do a very good job of delivering flow all the way throughout the entire tank and visually frees up that pane of glass. Last big benefit is that if you have a strong enough pump, you can have it branch out into several strategically placed outputs. So you're not limited just to one intake, one output. We now have a few fairly complicated closed loops and one intake would go to either two or three outputs, which then can be branched out even more. To do that, you need a pretty strong pump, which we'll talk about later, but our most complicated are one intake, three outputs. That kind of does it for the background of what closed loops are and some of those benefits. Let's go over some practical tips and tricks that I've learned from years of using them. The first thing, choice of bulkheads really matter. When I set these things up originally, I got decent ones. They're Schedule 80, but they're a discount brand. If I were to do it all over, I would have gone with the Hayward brand, mainly because the Hayward bulkhead is reverse threaded, meaning you turn it left to tighten it. Where it really comes in handy is when you are unscrewing something out of a Hayward, you are actually tightening the bulkhead itself. And that's really, really helpful because if you're at all fastidious about doing maintenance on your in-tank plumbing, over time, you will unscrew the bulkhead. Yeah, that's kind of scary. So now we have it on a monthly to-do list to go through and retighten all the bulkheads. It's been about, like I said, three to five years, depending on which closed loop we're talking about. And we don't really have a whole lot going on in the way of leaks. 
but we do have to stay fastidious about that. You might be wondering, why don't I swap out all of our existing bulkheads and go with Hayward's? Well, turns out like specialty plumbing-like bulkheads, they are not standard. A Hayward is much bigger diameter compared to other ones, and even though they're both inch and a half bulkheads, a Hayward requires a substantially larger hole in your glass aquarium. So that's not happening. I just have to live with these. That is like the number one argument against closed loops. Whenever you drill a hole in the bottom of your tank, it's going to be a risk. And there is a very good argument out there to just simply not design failure points like this. Can't argue with that. This is a pretty big downside. I guess the second downside is the hidden cost of all this plumbing that you need. If you were just to have a power head, it's the cost of the power head. You want a closed loop, it's the cost of the pump, and likely several hundred dollars more in plumbing depending on how crazy you wanted to go. In our case here, we went pretty crazy. Plumbing might have been, you know, thousand dollars. You can get wild, especially when you start incorporating valves and stuff like that. Next big thing that we did was we started to go through and upgrade our pumps. I think that this would have been the number one thing that I would have loved to have done on day one, and that is to use some really nice Abyss pumps. The reality of it, though, is that I had a lot of stuff to pay for back then, and I didn't really have the budget for it. One could argue that I still don't have the budget for it because while we do use dozens of them around the facility, there are still places where I could use several more. I'm going to chip away at that problem over time, no big hurry. Anyway, I could talk forever about Abyss pumps and why they're my favorite, but I will try to make it as short as possible because I realize that the audience for this is likely pretty small. They are a shockingly expensive pump that is hard for a lot of people to justify. The justification for us was that there's a lot riding on these systems. Like, they have to work right. Our return pump, for example, is an A400. I suppose this applies to anybody with either a large aquarium or perhaps a small aquarium just full of expensive stuff. Think about, like, how much is your tank worth? Once you start tallying up the value of the livestock in there, suddenly an expensive pump starts to look like a rounding error. In that sense, I would say that a super reliable pump like an Abyss would be insurance and peace of mind. But that is more of a return pump argument than a closed loop argument, right? So the closed loop argument that I would say is that maintenance at scale gets really crazy. I think on the Reef Beef podcast, Rich Ross was saying something along the lines of, he assumes that pumps and power heads are disposable. And you could absolutely make that argument, but it doesn't scale past a home aquarium. Because when you have a larger facility, when you have literally hundreds of pumps, hundreds of other devices, something is always breaking. And even if you mentally get past the part of, oh, I have to replace all these, simply the cost of the attention needed to replace them constantly becomes crushing. So for us, we needed fewer Abyss pumps. We started to replace multiple pumps with a single Abyss and have multiple outputs, for example. For us, maintenance goes down, reliability goes up, and we can actually spend our time doing more valuable things. Real quick, if you're in the market for an Abyss, here are some quick tips and tricks that I wish somebody had told me about these pumps. We use both the A200 and the A400. This is going to be my hot take, okay? They're both fantastic pumps, but I'm going to ride and die on this. The A400 might be the best aquarium pump ever, and that's only because I've never had a need or used an A1200. Given the cost upgrade from an A200 to an A400, it's like a few hundred dollars, but you're getting a much more substantial pump. I learned now just to pay that uptick in price and simply run the A400 at a lower power if you don't need all that power. 
because now you have a much more powerful, much more robust pump. And when you're dialing it all the way back to, let's say, 40%, the amount of wattage that that thing will consume will be next to nothing. When you look at the electrical consumption graphs, it's logarithmic. The closer you are to 100%, it's going to be 400 watts. But as you back it off, it is using substantially less power. So that's my tip there. Last thing that we learned as far as closed loops go is trying to source intake strainers. We went through all kinds of them. Initially, we tried to use these really low profile inch and a half strainers, and we kind of learned the hard way that pretty much any pump, I'm not even talking about super strong pumps, when the strainer is too low profile like that, they're basically a black hole. Snails can't escape, so they get stuck on them and they die. One time, this is kind of horrific, a fish was not able to get away. It died. The more surface area that you can give a strainer, the better. So the super low profile stuff was a no-go. You could get something like these basket strainers. They're okay, they're okay, but they are much bulkier. And at some point, that bulkiness becomes an issue. Also, the hole spacing does allow some smaller fish in. Ask me how I know. Yeah, dark times. The basket guys are all making their way out. The best one that we found are these cylindrical ones. I love them. They are super easy to cut. You can just use like a chop saw to get them down to whatever size you need. And we use them practically everywhere. We use them inside overflow boxes because fish are always finding their way into there for some reason. And they even make great like pod hotels or bergia hotels. Yeah, the little critters just love to make their homes there and lay eggs. Something to consider. All right, guys, that pretty much does it for this update video on closed loops. Hope you found it interesting. And until next time, happy reefing.